so part 2 of uh, passe composé is using passe composé with the auxiliary être when constructed with the auxiliary être it usually involves the verbs of movement or change of state when your state has changed as well as all reflexive verbs here's a detailed step by step guide on how you can form your uh, passe composé with être and it's nothing different it's the same as with avoir you have your subject right so first of all you need to identify the correct auxiliary verb so for the passive composer with être first ensure that the main verb means the verb that you want to change into past it requires être as its auxiliary because most of the verbs are conjugated with avoir this typically contains word uh, verbs of movement change of state and all reflexive verbs so any kind of verb which shows you know that there is some movement happening you are going up going down coming going all that all these verbs they will talk about uh, they will use auxiliary as être right and then you have your reflexive verb like se laver se lever that those all are your reflexive verbs a common mean, me, uh, mnemonic to remember some of these verbs is dr and mrs wonder thrump uh so mnemonic basically means that um it's like an abbreviation right so like short so dr mrs wonder thrump you will remember from d r m r s that your verb starts from here so for example from dr it is devenir and revenir to become to come back mrs monte reste sortir Wonder Trump is venir, aller, naître, descendre, entrer, retourner, tomber, rentrer, arriver, mourir, and partir. So all these are your movement verbs, which shows some kind of movement or change of state. I was born and then I died. right that is my change of state happening after that conjugate être in present tense now you need to just conjugate the verb être the auxiliary être in the present tense so with je it is suis tu it is a il elle on is a nous sommes vous êtes il elle sont right this is your conjugation now once you have done all of this you need your past participle usually er verbs you will remove the er add e with an accent ir verbs you remove ir add i re verbs you remove re and you put a u but there are some verbs again that you need to actually memorize for example ale is ale past participle venir all that's an ir verb you write venue for it arrive is your normal arrive right uh, you it depends totally uh, if you are you know conjugating it in a regular way or if you if it has some irregular uh, components to it one thing that's different about passe composé with être is the agreement of past participle means the past participle for example venir the past participle is venu for mourir for example it is mort for naître which is to be born it is né now all of these past participles should agree in gender with the subject again same thing if it is a feminine one you add an e if it is masculine you add nothing if it is plural you add s if it is feminine plural you add extra es to it right and that is only and only valid when your auxiliary is être the past participle must agree in gender and number with the subject when using être as an auxiliary if the subject is feminine singular you add e it's masculine plural you add s feminine plural you add es for example if a group of women arrived arrive you it's conjugated with être you would say l sont arrivé it's a group of female and it's plural so arrivé then your first 
uh, your final step is to combine the conjugated ethra which was conjugated in the present tense with the past participle so for example el feminine singular a is the verb ethra ale is the verb ale and it it has been uh, given its past participle so ale with an extra e because it's feminine singular nu som parti the subject you have the verb ethra and parti with an extra s because nu is plural then you have reflexive verbs for except for reflexive verbs the process is similar but you must also include the reflexive pronoun je me tu te so on and so forth so je me suis levé so what will come here subject plus your reflexive pronoun first then your verb être then your past participle that is the formula of your uh, past tense composite with reflexive verbs so your reflexive pronoun will come after the subject subject reflexive pronoun être and past participle after that you have a few exceptions there are some verbs that can be used with both être and avoir together some verbs can use both être and avoir as auxiliary verbs depending on their usage in a sentence the choice of auxiliary affects whether you need to make the past participle agree with the subject when used with avoir the past participle does not need to agree with the subject unless it is preceded by a direct object pronoun direct object pronoun basically means it's a direct object it's connected to the verb directly means that there is no preposition there in the sentence right the verb is not connected with the uh, object through a preposition it's connected directly when used with être the past participle must agree with subject in gender and number we have already done this so for example monte el a monte les escaliers so because it's el a monte monte is the verb montre which is usually conjugated with the verb être but here is an example with the verb avoir and if it is used with avoir it is not it is not agreeing with the subject right it's masculine only el a monte les escaliers she climbed the stairs el a monte now this is with être and it is agreeing with the gender of the subject she went up so there's an extra e descendre means to come down il a descendu les poubelles so he took out the trash no change because it's with avoir il a descendu because it's masculine so again there is no extra addition but this verb this past participle is agreeing with the subject he went down so with avoir it would become he took out the trash and with the other one with être it would become he went down then you have the verb passer nous avons passé le pont so we crossed the bridge nous sommes passés par le parc we went through the park nous sommes passés plural then you have verbs like rentrer sortir retourner again the um, when you make your um, past participle it totally depends if you are using être or if you are using avoir the agreement and choice of auxiliary depends on whether the verb is used transitively transitively means direct object or intransitively without a direct object now what are these transitive and intransitive verbs transitive verb means that they are connected to the object directly intransitive means that they are not connected to the verb directly and probably some preposition has been used for transitive and intransitive verb there is a rule with uh, passé composé also so for example transitive verbs are those that require a direct object to complete their meaning the action of verb is transferred to the object in the passé composé transitive verbs usually use avoir 
So direct connection verbs will use avoir as their auxiliary verb. Past participle agreement when using avoir with transitive verbs, the past participle does not agree with the subject but may agree with the preceding direct object pronoun, not with subject. Subject is your main subject of the sentence. Pronoun can be any pronouns. Example, elle a mangé la pomme. So, elle is my subject. Mangé is my uh, verb, past participle. La pomme is my object. Now, la pomme is directly connected to the verb. Right? It's not connected through some kind of preposition. Avoir is used and there is no agreement with la pomme. Right? There is no agreement because it does not precede the verb. Agreement can only happen if this object is somehow before this verb. Right? So that's a complex sentence structure. We'll probably uh, do it after we have done COD and COI which is another concept right which means complement d'objet direct complement objet indirect something that comes here before the verb right this is cod and coi now this is an example of cod complement d'objet direct so for example elle l'a mangé she ate it la is la pomme only now this object which was after the uh, which was after the verb came before the verb in English, it is always after the verb, no matter what. But in French, it goes before the verb. And when this happens, the even if it's with avoir, this is going to be, you know, this is going to uh, accord with what the subject is. Then you have intransitive verbs. Intransitive verbs do not require a direct object. Their action does not transfer to anything else. Many intransitive verbs that express motion or change of state use être as the auxiliary. So intransitive use être. So whenever we are conjugating with être, it is always going to agree. For example, elle est allée au marché. Now see, verb here is est allé. O is my preposition. Marché is markets, my object. This is my subject. She is going to the market. And she is eating apple. Eating apple, going to the market. There's a difference. So, ale agrees with l because it's conjugated with etre, right, as an auxiliary. There are sometimes verbs that can be both transitive and intransitive in nature. Some verbs can be used both transitively and intransitively with the choice of auxiliary verb and agreement rules depending on the context. Now, it is like uh, an irregularity in this part, transitive and intransitive, and it totally depends on the context. For example, the verb they have taken is monte. Transitive verb is il a monte les escaliers. Subject pronoun, verb, object, which is directly connected to the verb. Les escaliers is the direct object. Avoir is used. And Monte does not agree with les escaliers. But in an intransitive situation, il est monté, so il is my subject, est monté is my verb, just like this, par is my preposition, and le censeur is my object, by the elevator. He went up by the elevator. So direct object is not there, so être is used. Right, and Monte will agree with il, which is masculine singular. Had it been l, so it would have become l a Monte with an extra e, l a Monte. After that, you have negations. How does it negate? I did not eat it. Past tense. The basic negation structure in French involves two parts again, like simple ne and pa. In normal sentences, elle mange la pomme for example normal sentences present tense elle ne mange pas so it's ne plus verb plus pas now if you see in passé composite there are two verbs first is either être or avoir and the second is the main verb so in case of this what do we do we always put ne 
and pa in between uh, sorry around the first verb which is either uh, etr or avuar so we will put this around auxiliary which is etr and avuar never with the main verb special cases reflexive verbs for example because reflexive verb has also it also has reflexive pronoun it is the na is placed before the reflexive pronoun there is an example that is also given first is affirmative for example el se leve to now my present tense would have been el se lev right she wakes up early like she wakes up basically el se lev to she wakes up early passive composite would be el se lev and a extra e because it is uh, l as a subject which is feminine singular so extra e for it now i need to change this into past my formula would be l n c pa leve so here subject plus n plus your uh, pronoun uh, your reflexive pronoun plus the verb etr or uh, not avoir avoir is not uh, here pa plus your participe passe so if you remember the formulas like this it would really help you out then you have other negative words like uh, ne jame ne rien ne personne all of that so how will they change in a similar way il a mangé des huîtres so he ate a mangé des huîtres so no where would i put but before my auxiliary so il na i would have written pa here that he does not but i want to write he never so i would say jamme mange quite simply like we do our normal negations finally you have creating questions in passive compose how can you create questions there are three ways first is inversion method right inversion is a very formal method and it means for example normally je parle français this is my simple sentence and i can say je parle français i speak french it's it's a question but parle je français when i take this verb in front it becomes a question automatically this can never be an affirmative statement it can never follow by a full stop the inversion method is the most formal way to ask questions in french it involves inverting the subject pronoun and the auxiliary verb in passé composé je parle français i can say je parle français i spoke french right now i want to ask a question you spoke french or maybe i spoke french i don't remember i spoke french what i will do is i would say i will reverse this here parle français right this would be my inversion only the auxiliary verb will go in front that's it not the past participle example with etre et il allé à paris so my normal sentence would have been il est allé à paris affirmative once i take this et il it becomes a question if you have a name with the subject pronoun also for example mari l a fini c de voir full stop this is a this is a normal affirmative sentence mari she finished her homework now i want to ask a question mari she finished her homework i would say mari 
a tel fini se devoir de chi finish your homework then second method you have is ask method ask we already know when we are making uh, a very close ended question close ended question means if the answer is either yes or no it's not open right you don't have your opinion in it but when it is something like this the ask uh, it we use ask with it right for example i say let's use tu tu mange la pomme are you eating apple so now i cannot have an open ended answer to it i can just say yes i eat apple or no i don't eat apple so i can say mange tu which we just did inversion la pomme or i can say ask tu mange la pomme Right. Ask it you mosh lapo. Now with passive composite, it's pretty simple. Ask it you a moshi. Did you eat? Example with etra. Ask l a party er. Extra e because subject is feminine singular. Finally, you have intonation. Most easy, like the easiest way of making any question. It's just how you sound. For example, simple sentence: "You are fini. You finished. You are fini. Are you finished? Ils sont venus. They came. Ils sont venus. They came. It's like that. Your intonation is through your voice. Then you have one more, which is making questions using question words itself, right? So question words in French are quand, which is when. Pourquoi, why, comment, how, who, where, and what is this? The structure of the rest of the question can follow either inversion. Whenever there is these kind of question words, so it can be either inversion, either ask or either intonation. For example, with inversion, quand as-tu rencontré Marie? So simply reversed. Example with ask, comment ask. Tu as appris le français. Now here the sentence is straight only; it's not reversed. Example with intonation: O tu as acheté ça? Where did you buy that? Additional tips: negation in question. To form a negative question, place ne pa around the auxiliary only. In all cases, in negation in passive composé, ne pa is placed. Uh, around the auxiliary remember to make the past participle agree with the subject in gender and number when using et as an auxiliary even in questions so even in questions this rule is valid and that's pretty much it for uh, passive composite with et it's a little complicated but once you get the gist of it it is going to be smooth